Give God some praise. Praise his name. For his name is life. Come on, his name is forgiveness. His name is love. Come on, his name is power. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's power. There's forgiveness. There's deliverance. In that name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good, good to be in the house of God. Really, really good to be in the house of God. I hope you guys have that sense of uh, joy, joyfulness and happiness to be in the house of God. Amen. I know, I know it gets rough to, to get here, but once you get here, you can just sense God and you begin to say, you know what? This is where I belong. This is where I belong. Amen. You know, I, I think of people all the time because that's my business. It's people. It's God's business, so it's my business. You know, I'm about the Father's business, right? That's what Jesus said, right? That's what we're about. But you know how some people just have a, uh, a reason to be here. I need to be here. I have to be here. That's my reason. Without, without him, I have no life. I have no faith. My faith just goes smaller and smaller. That's the reason. And then there's people that have uh, uh, excuses, of not to be here. You know, why don't, why wouldn't you, if you're a Christian, why wouldn't you want to be in the house of God? You know, I've been a Christian this, this September will be 20, uh, 30 years, third years, and I, did I, and uh, 30 years, yeah, that I've been, I've been serving the Lord. I spoke to Pastor Art, my pastor, and I've been, spoke to him and uh, just told him, he says, it's been 30 years, Angel? I said, when I met, when I met you. There, and I told him how I met him and how he prophesied the first night over, over me. He was laughing and laughing because I thought he was a pimp when I first saw him, you know. <laughs> the way he was all dressed up, you know, because if you see him, uh, oh, yeah, he dresses orange, purple. We go to every end of the, every Sunday, huh, after, every last Sunday, he has a Holy Ghost meeting up in uh, Placencia. And we've been there in April. We've been here in May. We'll probably go there next uh, June again. So if you guys are more than welcome to come, it starts at 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, yeah, it's very powerful, very powerful. And uh, it's a good good teaching, good teachings he gives and a good good word, a good word, you know. So we just go there. Hey, Joe, you know what I'm talking about, right? So if you like to come there, you know, just we'll shoot you the address and everything. It's uh, we, t- we took The first time we took like 12 people. This time we took like 14 and, I, and he sees that. He goes, you take a lot of, you bring a lot of people. And I said, oh, yeah. I said, I'm going to have you in my church. I said, you're going to come over here and minister the word of God. And these people are going to know who you are, you know. Because he, he flows in the fivefold ministry, you know. So the apostle, the teacher, the evangelist, and all that, you know. I don't know if he flows in all five of them. But I, when I was sat under him, it was powerful. And that's where my, my life changed, you know. Right there, sitting under his word, the word he gave. So I, I told him, you know, I want him to come. And he said, yeah. He goes, I'll come. I said, all right, right on. So, you know, I want to invite all our families and friends that day. I want to fill this place out. You know, amen. And uh, uh, just, get, you know, us to get a word there, you know. But I want to welcome everyone on YouTube, everyone on Facebook. Welcome, welcome to our midweek service. Come on. Give yourselves a pl- uh, applause there. A round of applause. Give yourselves there at home. Thank you for coming out. We're in the second uh, book, Timothy, chapter 2. So if you want to mark your, uh, your Bible, we're going to be talking on, on that. We're going to be teaching on that, which should say, be finishing it out, I believe, from 15 to uh, 26. I think it's 15 to 26. I think I wrote 25, yeah, but I think it's from 14 to 26. Uh, it ends at 26. I'm going to try to finish that, you know, but uh, when you're teaching, Sometimes you 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 only can you you're only going to teach on two uh, two three verses, you know, because I, I would I would encourage you guys to try to teach somebody the scripture, you know. You probably go for a whole hour just on one scripture, you know, on one because that's how much power that's how much it has and that's how uh, 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 rich it is. The word of God rich. Hallelujah. So uh, I just want to I just want to encourage you guys to uh, dig into the word of God. Check the check for the wisdom. Check for the understanding of what the word of God says. Amen. Uh, I, I want to know God. I want to know God in his fullness. Never get tired of God. Never get tired of him. Amen. 
How you doing, me, huh? Good? Right on. You look good. You look good, man. Praise the Lord. See, you got a little friend there. Right on. Praise the Lord. That's beautiful. Right on. Right on. Don't mind me, me. He knows who I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we're going to do our, our uh, worship. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to worship with the team today. They asked me if I would worship. Said, All right. Praise God. <laughs> Father, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. Father, we thank you for what you're about to do in our lives. We thank you, Father, that the good work you've begun in us, that you're not, you're not going to uh, give up on us. We're not gonna, you're not going to finish. I mean, you're going to finish this thing in our, in our lives, Lord God. I thank you that you'll finish this work in our lives right now. So we just want to bless you. We want to honor you with our worship, with our praise, with our presence, Father, before you, how honored we are to be in your presence. What an honor it is that you know our name, Lord. That we hear your voice within or without. We hear your voice. We hear the instruction and the guidance of your word, Lord God. I thank you for those that are on their way right now, Lord. I say no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires, Father. Not even a, a ticket, Lord. Just a safe passage to and from this place right now, Lord. I thank you for every minister that's ministering right now. I pray that their faith will not fail them, Lord, but they'll continue to uh, press on and press on and press on, Father, to the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I pray that our ministers, Father, will last. Every nursery worker, every teacher, every media sound, Lord God, every worshiper, every instrumental here, every instrumental person who plays an instrument, Lord God, they're worshipers too, but Father, I just pray, and I pray for every family here. I pray for peace. I pray for joy, for the joy of the Lord is their strength, Lord. I thank you for who they are, that their identity is in Christ. They've been positioned in high places, Lord. So I bless you and I honor you, Father, for the healing power, for the renewing of our minds, Lord God. And they're transforming our lives. That our lives are being changed. Our faith is growing. Every time we hear the word of God, faith comes, Lord. So I thank you for that and I bless you, Lord. And I just ask you that you would continue to lead us and guide us, Lord, by your spirit. That we would hear your spirit, Father, every day. Every, every morning we wake up, we would hear the instruction for the day, Lord. And as we study the word today, Lord God, I pray that their hearts are open to receive the salvation of Jesus Christ. So I thank you and I bless you right now. In, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. You guys go and have a seat. I'm going to do the, I am going to do the announcement. Is that okay, guys? All right, amen. I almost forgot them. So we're going to do our announcement. We have a. The church is always doing something. If you, if you want to be engaged, if you want to be part of the church, I would just raise my hand and volunteer. You know, I even volunteer. I don't even like to use the volunteer, the volunteer that, you know what, I want to be part of the ministry. This is where you grow. When you get connected with the body of Christ, you grow. Amen. So we need help. We need help in our. So we need help, you know, uh, only sign up if you're gonna if you're gonna stay, you know, because there's a lot of people that sign up but they don't they don't last. They only last for two three weeks and then they're gone. Uh, uh, don't don't sign up if you're not gonna do that. I, I need people who's gonna be with us and be part of it. Amen. And I'm not being ugly. I know you guys are saying no. Oh, there he goes. I'm not being ugly. I, I'm closing my eyes. I'm, I'm not being ugly. I just I need I need some warriors. I need some warriors, amen, and you know where we come from, Ozzy, we didn't quit where we were from, right, we, through all the stuff we went through, we still said where we were from and things like that, but now we're new people in Christ, so let's use that same old lifestyle of being loyal to what we used to have, be loyal to, to what God is today in our lives, amen, we see all kinds of things out there, and we were addicted to those things out there, 
Let's be addicted to the goodness of God, the love of God, to the people of God. Can I get an amen? We have to do that. So I just want to encourage you guys that uh, want to go back. There you go. Cause, yeah, there it goes. So we have our potluck coming up this Sunday. Come on, come be part of it. Uh, whatever you like to bring, but always bring enough for yourself. Don't just bring enough for you and your two family members, you know. It's for 10 or more, you know. You want to buy, uh, have a spread for 10 or enough, uh, 10 or more people. And if you don't have money, I mean, if you don't have the food or want it, you can give money. You can buy some water. You can buy some soda pops. You know, you can do things like that. So uh, some, some of you guys cook real well. I want to taste your food. Mo, I want to taste your barbecue. Amen. <laughs> he does that. So every first, every first uh, Sunday we have potluck. Thank you, Lord. It's never blank in. I know. <laughs> it's never blank in, in uh, that. We're having our we're having our men's meeting this Saturday. Come on, invite a family, invite a, uh, a friend. You know, uh, even you ladies, you can invite your nephews, your cousins, your uncles, your father-in-laws. Your fathers, you can invite them. Hey, they're having a men's meeting. Go over there, you know, in Jesus' name. And uh, it's Saturday at 9 o'clock. We usually eat from 9 to 10, and then uh, we'll have the word from 10 o'clock to like 11 o'clock, you know. So come on down, you know, come on down. Be part of it. It's a, it's a lot of fun. There's our, there's our men of a higher standard. Then on the second week, second Saturday, we have women of virtue. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. That's our women's group, you know, iron sharpening iron, the word given there. So I just want to encourage you ladies to invite the same thing. Invite your mother-in-law, your sister-in-law, excuse me, your co-worker. Invite somebody. There's a power. There's power in an invite. Amen. Every one of you came to Christ because someone invited you. Amen. Someone invited you to salvation. Someone invited you to church. Someone invited you to a, an event. So we just want to invite you. You know, uh, some of you guys tell me you're leaders. Some of you, tell, you guys tell me that you're powerful. Be powerful in your witness. Be powerful in your witness. Amen. Like inviting people. Lead people to Christ. Amen. Prayer every Tuesday. We have prayer here every Tuesday. So I encourage you guys to come. You guys want to change your lives? Pray. Join us in prayer. You want to change your children's lives? Pray. Pray. You want to change your marriage? Pray. You want to feign your, uh, change your finances? Pray. It takes prayer. It takes prayer. Speaking to God and he'll do things for on your behalf if you would just believe. Amen. Thursday night we have Bible study. Every Thursday night we go line upon line, uh, chapter by chapter, precept by precept. We're teaching you the foundations of the word of God. You know, it's not like other services where you have services and people do all kinds of things and have different uh, uh, topics. That's okay. We will do that too here. We're going to let the, uh, the Spirit of God lead us, but Bible study is usually a fundamental thing that we can get some foundation under us, you know, and then when the, the storms come, when the winds blow, we're going to stand. We may go this way. We may go this way. We may go that way, but you know what? We're going to be grounded in Jesus' name. Amen? And that's what we're teaching in Bible study. So uh, come on out. Today's uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to try to finish that up. Hopefully we can. And then we get into 3. Can I get an amen there? All right on, right on. Sonny says amen. Is that it, Mia? That's it? All right. We're going to go ahead and worship God. I'm going to join. You're going to join us, Mia? We're going to, we're going to join the Lord in Jesus' name. Uh oh.
Let the Spirit of God just move in your heart to worship freely, to be abandoned from the normal, from the restrictions, from being looked at. It's okay to be a fool before the Lord. All he's looking for is your heart in this. As we do this corporate worship, and the songs that we sing are not the praise and worship to God. Your heart and your, your lifestyle and the way you live, that's all for Jesus. So sing a new song. Praise him. Lift your hands. Clap, dance. But give it to God. Amen.
Come on. 
always guides me. He always guides me through mountains and valleys, through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. Restores my soul. Restores my soul. Mercy and goodness. Mercy and goodness. Gives me assurance. It gives me assurance. That I'll see his glory. I'll see his glory. Face to face. Face to face. of God say hallelujah Your 
Raise your hands to the heavens. Raise your hands to God. He doesn't deserve our second best. He doesn't deserve what we have left over from the day. He deserves our best. He's done nothing but give us the best. Raise your hands to the living God in his house. This is his house. We honor you. We reverence you, my God. 
we glorify you for you alone are holy for you alone are worthy Lord please forgive us if we've given you our second best if we've given you what we had left when we come into your presence Father please forgive me personally We will strive to give you our all, Father, for you've given us your all. You've stretched your hand out many times to each of us, Lord. And we lift our hands to you this evening to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. We love you, Lord. We bless you and we praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. You are the lifter of our heads. You are our strong tower. You are our strength, Lord. The love of our soul. We love you, Father. Father Christ. Thank you, Jesus. If you can make your ways back to your seats, we're going to receive our tithe and offering. Hallelujah. We're going to continue in worship. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to continue in worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. What a privilege and an honor it is to be able to give unto the Lord. Amen. If we could put up Deuteronomy chapter 8, please. Uh, 16 and 17, I believe. Yeah, here we go. Then you say in your heart, my power and my might of my hand have gained me this wealth. I'll raise my hand because I've said that before. <laughs> I was the one that went to school. I was the one that worked hard. I was the one that got pushed around on a job site as an apprentice. I thought I was creating my own wealth for a while there. Amen. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is, as it is this day. He made a covenant with our fathers. Amen? And therefore, he supplies all that we need. Amen? He's a supplier. Amen? So tonight we have an opportunity to give back. Just a dime on our dollar for those that are tithing this evening. And for those of you that are giving above and beyond, that's a, considered a love offering. These, these handsome married ushers, they'll get you an envelope here. We have a few ways to give. If you want to lift up your hands for an envelope and they'll, they'll kindly give one to you. Uh, we have a few ways to give. You can scan your QR code. Excuse me. Scan that. It'll prompt you to the next steps that are necessary. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So here at Turning Point, we don't take your offering. Uh, you, you freely give here. So the buckets are here in the front. So I want to encourage you to pray over your offering before you give this evening. Amen. This is for the kingdom. Amen. Yeah. 
we thank you and we bless you, Lord. We thank you for the increase that's come forward this evening, Father God. We thank you for the gifts that have come this evening, Father. We thank you for the di diligence of the obedient tithes that have come forth this evening, Father God. Lord, and I ask that you continue to speak to the man of God, Father God. Speak to Pastor Angel, Lord, and the board on how to allocate these funds, Father. Lord, we thank you for the works that we've been able to do, Father. And we believe you that we will be able to do even greater works, Lord. When we all be a part of this team, this team called the body of Christ, Father. When we follow your word and obey your commandments, Father. And as one body, we give into your bosom, Father God. And we believe God for expansion in the kingdom, Father. We are here to build your kingdom, Father. And we thank you and we bless you, Lord. Open up doors for those that have a heart to give, Father. Open up those doors. Give them the jobs that are necessary, Lord. Open up doors for myself, Lord, that I can give into your bosom, Father. I love you and I bless you, Lord. Bless those that have given this evening, Father. Open up the windows of heaven on their behalf, Lord. And for those that have a heart to give, Father, maybe they weren't able this evening, Lord, I ask that you open up the windows on their behalf as well, Father, that they're able to give, Lord. Bless each and every family that's here this evening, Father, and those that weren't able to make it tonight, Father. And we thank you for those that are watching in on Facebook land and YouTube world. Bless them right where they are, Lord. Invite them here to the house, Father, that we can get to know them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're going to release our children. The youth will be staying in tonight. Amen. Praise God. So hallelujah. Let's celebrate the children, family. Come on, guys. We've been doing this for many years. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pastors, contractors, plumbers, teachers, evangelists, social workers. They're still going. They're still going. Hallelujah for the next generation. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, the worship team, you're released. Thank you very much. Pastor Angel. Praise God. Come on, give the Lord a praise offering. He saved you. You're going to heaven. Your sins are forgiven. we got to be grateful and thankful. Amen. You're healed. You're whole. You're well. Amen. You may never have been sick in your body, but sometimes our mind, our emotions are all messed up. Amen. But God healed us and he made us new people in Christ. And we're learning to walk that way. And that's why we... We study the Bible and we teach the Bible and we're instructed by the Spirit of God in the Bible. The Word is alive. Yeah, yeah. Amen. The Word is alive. This Word is alive. Amen. Before the, he says, while the earth was void, that God spoke in the Word. The Word was spoken. Yeah. Amen. And that gave life and it gave light even to us right now as believers. It's the Word of God that gives you life. It's the word of God that heals you and delivers you. Amen. It's the way of the Lord. Go ahead and have a go ahead and have a seat in Jesus' name. 
we're going to just go ahead and get right into it, Diego. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you guys would open up your Bibles to uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Uh, put, a, put a Philippians, Philippians, ay, 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 Philippians 3, 1, in Jesus' name. Philippians 3, 1. I'm your pastor. Yes, sir. All right, about five of you, I'm your pastor. Amen. I'm your pastor. Yes. Amen. Uh, so I want to I want to encourage you guys, and even starting off just with this scripture right here, because we're talking about right here in, in, in Timothy. When we get there, we're talking about being approved and disapproved as as workers, as people who are working their uh, uh, salvation before God with fear and trembling. A lot of us think it's just automatic. It's not. You got to learn how to endure. You got to learn how to last to the very end. Amen? Because uh, even the very elect says, even the very elect at the end will be deceived from their salvation, from believing God, from trusting God. Can I get an amen? And that's why we got to learn how to last. You know? Don't let no one put no uh, uh, wet jacket on your, on your fire. You just keep on praising God, amen? If you're the only one clapping, amen, you're the only one clapping and no one else is clapping, it's okay. If no one else is saying amen, pastor's got an amen, amen? I come from a Pentecostal background. I'm not Pentecostal, but I come from the background, so I know what all this mean, means, you know. Glory, you know, they start doing all that stuff. So just want to encourage you guys. There you go, yes, to, to be glad. You, you got to learn to be glad that you're saved. You, you're the one that has to have a smile. Not your wife. You got to have a smile. Amen. When you see her, you, you know, she may think you're smiling at her, brother, but you're smiling because you got joy of the Lord in you. Amen. You can fool her out for a little bit, you know. Put a little uh, move on her, you know, in Jesus' name. But here the Bible says, this is, this is Paul again, and he's encouraging. Paul's an encourager. He's an exhorter. And you guys who play sports and coach sports, you should be an exhorter. All right. You that tell me you're leaders. You, you should be exhorters. You should be exhorting people. You should be encouraging people. Amen. If you're, if you're a husband or a wife, you should be encouraging your kids. You should be raising them up in encouragement. Amen. Even if they're hardheads. I raised a hard head. I raised a hard-nosed kid. And now he tells me, I love you, Dad. And I thank God for the person you are. And you never gave up on me. And you never gave up being that person. You were always a positive guy. And I remember I used to ask him when he was away to college, you know, hard way, uh, the hard-nosed college. You know, when he was in college, I would say, can I pray for you? No, 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 no. Can't pray for me. Don't pray for me. I mean, here, you, you know, you got to be hard. You got to be ugly. If not, you get, they'll take care of, you know, they'll, they'll take advantage of you. You get all soft. That, your prayers get me all soft. Dad, get me mushy and crying in the cell. And, you know, your cell, but your cell, your cell, he'll tell you stuff. But I kept on, I said, well, let me just, thank you, sir. I said, let me just pray real quick. And I pray fast, you know, five, seven prayer, five seconds. You know, some of us think we got to pray for Japan and we got to pray for, oh, you know, Mexico and all that. No, Father, I just thank you and I bless you for my son. I thank you that he's divinely protected. I thank you that he's healthy. I thank you he's well. I thank you that he has the spirit of God. Wherever he goes, goodness and mercy follows him all the days of his life. In Jesus' name, amen. How long did that take? About seven seconds? It says the fervent prayer of a righteous man avail it much. Not a long prayer, not a tongue-talking tongue prayer. A fervent prayer. A prayer that's full of hot, full of uh, fervency, full of love for the person you're praying for. And we should have love for one another. I love you guys. I don't even know you. I mean, I love you because I'm a Christian and you're a Christian, right? 
Amen? We're, 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 we're speak Spanish. Oh, for the first time. No, oh, perdón. Si lo hablo bien poquito. Oh, man, I've got another Ryan right there, my brother. Come on. Ese casó con una mexicana también. Ahora habla español, le güerio. Yo creo que lo habla más mejor que uno. But here we go. It says right here, it says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same thing, for me to tell you the same thing as Pastor tells you over and over and over. He says, for me to write the same thing to you is not tedious. It's not bothersome to me. It is not. How many times have you ever told your son to take out the trash? How many times have you ever told your son to brush his teeth? They get up and they walk around the house and they got the dragon going all around. Yeah? Brush the dragon. Kill that dragon with that toothbrush, you know. Amen. Take a shower, brothers. You've been already about three days. It smells like a gym in your room, man, you know. How many times have we told our kids that stuff, right? But we don't stop because we love them. Because it's going to hit them one day. And they're going to become just like your dad, right, Mia? <laughs> Straighten out their clo- their closet real neat, folding their their uh, uh, their clothes in the drawers and all that. Yeah, exactly. You go in my house and that's how my drawers are. I rotate all my clothes. I wore that last week. That goes in the back. This goes in the front. And I taught my kids that. And my kids do that stuff. I think she said she quit, right? She quit on that, you know. <laughs> but here it is. <laughs> To write the same thing to you is not tedious, but it's safe. It's safe that Pastor uh, uh, repeats himself. It's safe that you hear the same thing over and over. Because if I ask you, what did you hear when we go into the foyer right after this? Someone like, hmm, it was good. <laughs> what was it about? I'm telling you, it was real good, Pastor. <laughs> You, you got the devil will steal it from here to there if we allow him to. That's why it's good to take notes. Because if you take notes, you're gonna you're gonna retain 25% more than anybody else. And then when you go home and you say, I'm bored, I have nothing to do, shouldn't be bored. Because you're gonna go over your notes from Thursday to Sunday. And when you get there Sunday, I'm in I'm in tune. I'm in tune. To that, Amen. So, this is what Paul's saying there. Let's go now to Second Timothy, Mia. Second, Second Timothy. I say Mia because she's way younger. She she could be my daughter, Amen. They're just way younger. They're younger people, so that's why I say Mijo or Mia. I'm not. Do you guys know, Amen? And today, you know. My pastor told me, he exhorted me. He said, live a clean life. Live a righteous life before the people. And I said, I do. I do. I live a righteous life before you. I live a clean life. I'm not a perfect man. But I live a holy life. I live my life separated from the world. I don't mix up with the world. I don't. Do I have friends from the world? Yeah. Do I speak to them? Yes. But I'm not going to mix up with them. I'll go to their barbecues for a little bit. I'm not going to sit there four or five years, five, four or five years, four or five uh, uh, hours, because what happens? You get, you get tired of holding it up, and then all of a sudden you find yourself drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette and stuff like that, start thinking foolish things, stupid things. So, you know, hey, we're there for a season. We're here for an hour, two hours, and I got to go. That's how I protect myself. You guys don't have to do it like I do, but that's how I do it. You know, I'll just go for an hour, then I got to go. Thank you for the invite. You know, and and I go home, and I go do my thing. Because I got to protect who I am in Christ. Because the devil is going to come after me before he's going to come after you guys. Because if he can knock me down, He's going to knock you guys down. He's going to scatter like, they, like the disciples, right? 
when they, when they found out that Jesus Christ had got arrested and all that, they all jammed. They all went their way. And that's what happens. And that's why we got to learn to stay together. That's why it's good to come to Bible studies. We, we, we should be here every Thursday. I, I, told the, I told some of my church, my leaders, I was about to call in for the first time in 20 years. I never miss a Sunday on purpose because of me. I, 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 I missed because of my surgeries. But for me to say I'm not going to church because I'm going to go do laundry, I'm going to go to the fair, I'm going to go to the Laker game, I've had tickets offered to me on the floor for the Laker game years ago. But I know it's a trick. So I say, no, I can't go. I said, not that I can't go. I don't want to go. I'm not going to go. I'm going to serve God. This is my life, and I'm just encouraging you guys. This is my conviction. But I want you guys to have that same type of faith that I have in Jesus' name, faith toward God, that you know what? I'm not going to play no games. I'm not going to play no games. I'm going to serve God. I've, I've talked to my two nieces over there, right? Commitment and what? Consistency is the word, right? Commitment and consistency. As Christians, that's what it's. We should be committed to the things of God, and we should be consistent to the things of God. Every one of us that's sitting right here, and every one of you that are listening, <coughs> excuse me, on, on TV, on the media, you got to learn to be consistent, and you got to learn to be consistent. I mean, committed. And that's the thing with the body of Christ. COVID came. And that was a ploy of the enemy, of the devil. He came to kill, steal, and destroy, and to divide. Why were they attacking uh, churches and not the liquor stores? Why were they allowing, allowing the liquor stores to be open? The places that have those nasty people dancing and all that stuff. Why were those open, but we couldn't worship? They didn't want you to worship because they didn't want you to uh, 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 spread the germ. All lies. All lies. All lies. And some of us are still falling for that. We haven't even came back to church since 2020. Three years, some people haven't came back to church yet. Why? Why would you allow yourself to be tricked or, or duped by the, the enemy? The Bible says we're not ignorant to his devices. We are not ignorant to his devices. We know a lot. When you hear a lie, you know someone's lying. Your comadre is lying to you like, you're a liar. You're lying. You is lying right in my face. You a liar right to me, man. You're like, oh, my God. And you were my best friend. You were a good friend. Now I know you as a liar. You know? And it happens. It happens. I've had to call people out that were my friends and my family. They're gossips. You're not going to gossip with me. You're not going to gossip here on this phone with me. It's not going to happen. You're a gossip. Stop. If you do it, then don't call me up no more. We're going to talk about the word and encourage one another. We'll do that. If you've got problems and you need prayer, you need some encouragement, pastor's here. I was telling a brother that today because he got offended on what I said Sunday. Christians getting offended. That's a trip because we're supposed to be dead men. We're dead people. We're dead, dead unto the uh, old way of life, and we're new in Christ now. So how can you get offended if you're dead already? Because you're still alive unto the flesh. You're not alive unto Christ. Because as soon as you, they offend you, your first uh, response is to say, I forgive them, Father. They don't even know what they're saying. I forgive them right now. That's how love operates. Because love is the greatest thing of all. Hope, faith, and love, right? The, the greatest of all is what? Love. And if we really truly love Jesus Christ... We truly love God and we love the word of God. We're going to forgive. Amen. We, we should forgive. We should be walking in forgiveness. We should be a, a witness of forgiveness. Now, they're just going to forgive you. They ain't even going to trip. She ain't going to even trip on you. And that's how it should be as a Christian. They're just lovers, man. They just love everybody, bro. You know, we could be drunk and they're still going to love us, man. You know, that's how it should be. 
We should be loving each other. I don't care what they said, what they've done. We were there at one time, right? We lived that life. And a Christian loved us. One Christian loved us. Somebody loved us. Somebody didn't, didn't give up on us. Right? And that's how it should be. So here Paul is encouraging Timothy. Timothy is a, a, a mentor, a, a mentoree, I would say. I don't know how to say it the correct way. But he, he's, a, he's a student. Thank you. He's a student under the tutelage of Paul. Paul's teaching him. And he's teaching pastors. These are pastoral uh, 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 letters to us. You that are leaders, you that want to study the word of God, you who want to know God one-on-one, -on -one, this is it right here. This is discipleship. This is discipleship class. That's what, it's, that's what it's all about. Right here it says, check it out. It says, remind them, he's speaking, he's speaking of the grace that he was talking about from 1 through 13. He's talking about the grace of God, the love of God, that how he was in chains, but his words are in chain. They're not chained up. The word of God is not chained up. It's free. No matter what we go through in life, no matter if we backslid for five years, five months, five days, the word remains the same. It doesn't matter. The word of God, the word of God doesn't change because of my feelings or my emotions, because of my sin and I blow it. God's word does not change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He loves you in sin and he loves you out of sin. And he's going to love you out of sin if you just repent. If you just tell the Lord, Father, I'm sorry, I'm going to blow it. That's how pastor got saved 30 years ago. I was, I was telling Pastor Art, I said, I was stoned for four days, hitting it for four days. I was on a good one, and I came and sat down in the front row right over there. And I was laughing at him, the way he was dressed and all that. I said, brother's a pimp. He's making money. I said, that brother got it going on. And I told him that. He was laughing. He says, you were thinking that? I said, oh, yeah, then you called me out. I didn't even know him. From day one, I did not know him. And he says, there's someone here laughing. And there's like 400 people in the church. He didn't know who I was. He says, there's someone laughing here at what God is doing. He says, and God is dealing with him right now. And he's, he's over here preaching to this session. And I'm over there. And he walks right over there. And I knew it. I go, I knew you were coming. I said, my heart was going boom, 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 boom. Like, oh, my God, he's coming. And he walked up right to me. He says, you're this man. And today, God's going to deliver you. You're never going to do drugs again. You're not going to be with a woman that's not your wife ever again. He said, you're a, a, you're, you're a violent man. You were a violent man. You're not going to be a violent man no more. He says, your fights are going to be on your knees. And I told him, everything you said came to pass. I probably must have had one-on-one -on -one fights about 11, 12 in my, from being 17 years old to 34 years old. Going toe to toe with people. And one time during my Christianity, someone came in my face and got all crazy and everything. And I'm like, I'm going to drop this boy right here, right now. I'm going to hit him with the left. I'm going to hit him with the right. You know, that, that's what my thinking. Exactly. I was just tripping. And God says, you're not hitting nobody. You're not touching nobody. You do this, you're going to lose your anointing. I'm going to take everything I've given you away from you. And I told him, I'm, I'm going to walk away from you, brother. I got to walk away from you, carnalito. Right now, I'm going to walk away because I can't do this. I don't want to do this. And I walked away. And when I walked away, God gave me more strength. Because when you pass a test, when you go past the temptation, God strengthens you. He makes you stronger. He makes you better. He makes you wiser. But you got to go through it to get to it. You got to go through something to get where you got to go. If we don't go through it, then we're going to just fail and fail. We're going to go over and over and over. And failure is not the end. Because we all have failed and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us, we've fallen. 
the, the thing is to get up, my brother. Bubby, is to get up. Want to quit? I'm not quitting no more. I was a quitter. I'm not a quitter no more. I'm a victor. I'm a warrior for God now. Amen? And this is Paul. I'm not even on my notes yet, man. <laughs> but this is how we're to live. And this is Paul, the apostle who wrote two-thirds of the Bible, of the New Testament. He wrote it. God speaking to him, he started writing things down. Just like when you write notes down. If you look at notes from 20 years ago, from five years ago, from seven years ago, you're like, oh, my God, I wrote that? What a trip. That's mind-blowing. I go look at my notes that I have in boxes from 1998, 95. I'm like, oh, my God, I wrote this stuff. That's God, the inspiration of God. When I write a note. These are my notes on this page. All by the inspiration of God. He begins to talk to you, and here we go. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord. He says, not to strive about words to no profit and to uh, uh, ruin the hearers. Why, why are we arguing about some stupid stuff? Why do divorces and separations happen? Because a word, your words marry you and your words will, uh, will divorce you. Your words, there's power of life and death in the tongue. And you will eat it. And you eat the fruit thereof. Can I get an amen, church? What you say has power and authority. If it's negative or it's positive, if it's death or life, it has power. And you know it. And we got to learn how to be quiet a lot. Even us men. We talk too much. We brag too much. We got to just learn to be quiet. So that's what he, he's talking about. They're, they're, uh, uh, they're fighting. He, he's fighting all the time. And he says, nice. So right here says, be warned that the vain technology, uh, 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 theological quarreling can ruin and is never harm, helpful. Never helpful. When you argue with the brother, that didn't help nothing. When you argue with one another, there's no help there. You may won the war, the, the battle, but you lost the war. Now you're sleeping on the sofa. Now your food is all salty. Amen? You're laying on bed and you got pillows in between you. I'm telling the truth, right? We're going back to back. You ain't getting no good night kiss tonight. Back to back, my brother, you know. We do that stuff. Can I get an amen, church? All right, well, at least four or five of you, you guys got it together. So praise be to God. But he says, you know, it, it's just dumb little things. He says, and it hurts the people that are hurting. When you guys are arguing, who gets, who gets hurt? The kids. Right? Your best friends, they get hurt. It don't even hurt you because your heart's all hard. But it hurts your child. That hurt a brother or sister in the church that hurt it. When I first became a pastor, my first year, I had two good friends that were pastors, and we started going to the mountain. And they didn't agree on something. Those two pastors didn't agree. I'm only like about 14, year, uh, 14 months old in the, in the ministry. These guys are 20, 25 years already. And they couldn't come to a, 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 a re, uh, yeah, say it again. Agreement, agreement. They couldn't come to it. So one of them said, I'm leaving. I'm not ministering with you, and I'm not going to go with you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You guys are both nuts. What are you talking about? I said, you got a young guy in front of you, and this is the way you're going to talk, and this is the way it's going to end? That's the way it's going to end. And you're going to learn something here, young man. That's what they told me. I said, wow, what a trip. Broke my heart. Went home and cried, honestly. Because these are my friends, and these are men I'm looking up to. And the same thing with you guys. When you do this in front of your children, you're breaking their hearts. Someone's listening, 
and you're breaking their hearts. So it's not even worth it. Someone has to take the high road. I say, I'm not fighting with you. I'm not arguing with you today. I'm not going to do that. I'm a Christian. I'm to live a different way. Because we did that when we were in the world. Can I get an amen? Verse 15. He says, be diligent to present yourself. Be diligent to uh, to present yourself. Not no one else, yourself. He's talking to Timothy. Timothy, I'm telling you to be diligent to present yourself approved unto God. I'm telling you guys right now. Present yourself to be approved unto God. Not to me and no one else, but to God. That's your responsibility as Christians. To prove yourselves a worker who does not need to be ashamed of his lifestyle. The way he speaks, the way he thinks. Rightly dividing the word of truth. uh, uh, Rightly dividing the, the word of truth. Rightly knowing how to express yourself through the word of God. How to explain it to people. You should have a scripture that you should, you, you should be able to explain it to a lost person. A person that's mad, a person that's hurt. You should be able to have a scripture to, to bless them. But, you're, but us as Christians, we still need leche. So some of us kind of like, no puedo decir en español. But we can't have the, the milk. I mean, we, all we want is milk. You don't want to meet. You don't want to study. You don't want to meditate. You don't, you don't want to know the ins and outs of, of the word. Because the ins and outs are going to mature you. The study of the word is going to mature you. And you become a man and a woman. When you were a child, you spoke as a child. But now that I'm a man, Paul says, so you begin to behave yourself as a man. There's a lot of men, boys that are 45, 50 years old. They're boys still. I run, I run into them all the time. And then you got a 23-year-old, 24-year-old that are men. They know how to conduct themselves. They know how to live. They know where they're going. They have goals. They have dreams. Some of us, if I ask you, you have dreams and goals, uh, my goal is to wake up tomorrow morning. You know, you got to have goals for a week, for a month, six months, for a year, for five years. Where are you going? When you're going to buy your house, you should have a goal set. In three years, I'm buying a house. In five years, I'm buying a house. If I'm buying a second house, in two years, I'm buying a second house. I have a plan. Amen? Or whatever. It doesn't have to be a house. Oh, we time flies. Okay, so be diligent to present yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? Then he says right here, but shun means to avoid, to ignore, to shun uh, uh, profane and idle babblings, for they will increase or lead to more ungodliness. The more you gossip, the more you talk about people, the more you talk negative It's going to lead you closer to ungodliness. It takes you away from God. And you guys all all have experienced that. When you're not talking the word of God, you're talking the world. And it draws you away from God. Exactly right. And that's why people can't worship before God. Because they've already said so much. They don't even want to read the word of God because they've already said so much. And the enemy... It's already taking them out. And that's why we have to repent. And this is what he's telling Timothy. Because Timothy's a pastor, a young pastor. But I'm telling you guys, as young people, because everyone in this room is, except Olivia and myself, and I'm not going to say all that, but you know that I'm one of the oldest persons in this room. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more to more ungodliness. And their message will spread like a cancer. Hanemius and uh, Philetus are these sort. He, he call, calls these two men. He says, this is who I'm talking about. 
And you guys get upset when pastor just says your name in a, a joke or just trying to encourage you. These men, they started spreading a, a cancer, and this is the cancer they spread it, who have strayed concerning the truth. They stood away from the truth. They, they, they strayed away from what the truth is. Some of you know the truth, and some of you will walk away from the truth at the end day. Some of us will not make it to the end. And that's why we got to stay in the truth. It's hard. It's discipline. But we must do it, church. We, we got to depend on each other. Amen? We have to learn to depend on each other. Can I get an amen? I need you and you need me. Who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past. And they uh, overthrow the faith. Of some. Paul preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I'm the truth, the way, and life. There is no one like me. I told you that I am the resurrection and life. The truth. He says, and these two guys, because they got away from the truth, start making their own little gospel, which is not the gospel. They start saying the resurrection already happened. They were saying that, you know what, when you get born again, that's your resurrection, that you're born again. It's not. It's a lie. Jesus Christ is coming. Amen. And every tongue will confess and every knee will bow. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. On the way to heaven or on the way to hell, everyone is going to confess one way or the other. And I'm being honest and I'm being truthful. And that's why we have to practice protecting our hearts and our minds and our profession. You got to know what you're saying by the word of God. Not by your own foolish thinking and reasoning. It's got to be the word. Someone asked me, what about if you're a good person? You know, I said, I know a lot of good people. But they don't make it to heaven because they never believed in Jesus Christ. They never followed the teachings of Jesus Christ. They don't know him. They profess to know him, but in their lifestyle, they deny him. And they become an abomination to God, a hatred to God. That's what happens. When we backslide, our hearts get hard, and we get hard toward God. I don't want to hear you, brother. Don't talk to me about Jesus. Don't talk to me about the word. Am I speaking the truth? Yes or amen? Amen. amen. He says they stir away from the uh, overflow of the faith of someone. They don't just damage themselves, but they damage other people. When you backslide, you're not just backsliding by yourself. People are watching you. Oh, I thought fulana, I thought you were a Christian. You told me you were a Christian last month. Oh, yeah, but I'm not going to church no more. I'm, you know, so what are you doing? Oh, I'm nightclubbing now and stuff like that. What a bad witness. Because you don't know if that person was ready to go to Jesus Christ. And now they're not. We become a bad witness. Not just telling the lies and the things of lies on God and the truth. Now our whole life has become a lie. Can I get an amen, church? Come on. Don't shut me down. Verse 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity, from an immoral life, from a grossly unfair life. It says, let everyone who calls on Jesus' name, depart from iniquity, from evilness. A lot of Christians living the way they want to live in sin and all that and still say, I'm a Christian. I don't know. <coughs> Throwing dice with your life. I gambled with my life for 34 years. And I thank God I didn't die in my sin because I would have went to hell. I knew that. I knew that. And God forgave me. 
and he gave me a new opportunity, just like every one of you here today have an opportunity to follow God, to serve God. Amen? He says, but in the great house, verse 20, but in the great house there are uh, not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some of honor and some of dishonor. Some household utensils are minimal. They're, min they're minimal. Others are noble for noble use. The metaphor here Paul states and he's using is that the church has false prophets in it and has true prophets in it. In the house of God, there's people that are honorable and there's people that are not. Yes, and they live among us. I didn't get no amen. I must be preaching pretty good. Verse 21, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, from all that he's already given you and told you, he says, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, set apart for the use of the master, prepared for every good work. Amen. Ephesians 2.10, real quick, Mihai. Ephesians 2.10, if you guys are in your Bible, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. God sets us apart to honor us. And he prepares you to be a blessing to somebody. And not just somebody, a lot of somebodies. I don't know how many people have come through our church at Turning Point. Thousands and thousands of people. 20 years I've been preaching the gospel of Christ. People come for three months, people come for three years, and they're gone. It's all right, I ain't mad at them. I'm preaching the gospel of Christ. And a lot of people, one guy, uh, we were at Diego's wedding up at the, uh, Mary, uh, what was it called, the Mary, Queen Mary. A, a gentleman walks up to me and says, you're that pastor that was preaching up at the mountain. He said about 15 years ago. He says, do you remember me? I'm like, oh, yeah. I, no, I, I go, so I don't. I, I, go, I apologize. I don't remember you. He goes, you had a lot of passion. He goes, I remember you. He goes, you had a lot of passion when you preached. He goes, that's how I remember when I saw him, like, that's that preacher. I go, I'm Angel. My name is Angel Bruce, and he told me his name. He says, thank you. He goes, because you touched my life. So we don't know who we're touching. We don't know when we're touching them. Even some of you guys today, today your life can change. Some of you guys live que sera, sera lives. Do the same thing you've been doing even when before you were saved. You're still doing the same thing. Ain't nothing changed in your life. Nothing has changed. You're still doing the same thing. Watching TV when you get home. Wash my car on the weekends. Go for a motorcycle ride. Kick back. Yeah. Going to go to a ball game. Still doing the same thing. You ain't reading. You ain't worshiping. You ain't praising God. You, there, ain't no joy, there ain't no joy in your life. There's a smile, not a smile in your life. Some of you still... Take pictures, I watch you guys. Still got the Vato thing going on. Like, serious? You're 45 years old, man. Cut that stuff out. That's for kids. That's for 15, 16, 17 year olds. Amen? We got to change our lives. Yeah, we got, I got tattoos. We got tattoos and all that stuff. But we don't have to live that way no more. I'm not living that way no more. I talked to that too for I can relate to you guys. Because some of you guys are still a little vato, so I got to talk that little slang with you. Hey, some of you brothers from the south side where I'm from, like, what's happening, my brother? You know, things like that, amen? But here it is. For we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ. We're made in Christ. Je Jesus, for good works, not bad works. We're made for good works. That's beautiful. Amen? which God prepared beforehand that we should walk away from. Walk in them. This is how it works to live our lives, and people are going to know our lives because you're walking a good life. You're walking a, a life that is righteous before God. You, you ain't got to fake it to make it. You got to faith it to make it. F-A-I-T-H. You got to faith it to make it. Use your faith to make it. I'm not saying perfect. We used to say when we coached, you know what I mean? Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Back in the 60s and 70s, it's a lie. You're never going to be perfect. 
Practice makes us better. We become better Christians. And we begin to believe God and trust God. And we begin to live for God. Can I get an amen? I, I, I pray that five years from now, you'll be different. You'll be different. Did I run into you again from five years and you're still the same? It's sad, exactly. Very sad. Very sad that you don't even have a scripture in your mouth or in your heart. You should have a scripture memorized. One. I was taught by my pastor, you should have one scripture for every year of salvation. You should have one scripture for every year memorized. So how long you've been saved? That's how many scriptures you should have memorized that you can uh, uh, quote it to people. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. We would be full of scripture. Amen. Verse 22. He's speaking to Timothy and speaking to us. Flee also young uh, youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace. And those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart were to quit lusting for the fleshly things of, uh, of the world, of power prestige of a woman or a man, money. That's not always it. You got people that live in a, four or five people live in a two-bedroom apartment and they're happy and they're glad. You got a big old pad and you can't even talk to each other. Got to make a house in the garage for you can live separate from a five-bedroom house, three-bath house. Amen, thank you. You know? But you got money, but you're miserable. You're bitter. Argue with everybody and anything. Why not argue with the cat? <laughs> you're so bitter. That shouldn't happen. We should be the joy. The same person you're here at church, hallelujah, glory be to God, I love you, pastor, should be the same person at home. Yeah. You go to my house, this is who I am. My, my grandkids and my family, they all know that. I'm not going to change for nobody. I'm not going to put no, no fake for anybody. This is who Angel Baruch is. This is the way I live. You go to my house, I'm going to be laughing. I'm going to be joking around. And people told me that I joke around too much as a pastor. They go, you play around too much. You're always playing around. I'm like, wow, I thought the joy of the Lord was my strength. I thought I was supposed to have some goodness. You wouldn't like me. You know, 32 years ago. I mean, you wouldn't even have got along 32 years ago. I would have jammed you or you would have jammed me. You know? But now I'm a Christian. And you want to call me a, a sissy or a punk. I'm like, wow, wait, what a trip. We're Christians. Our life is to change. We're not the same person. God, you had an experience with God now, man. So your whole life has changed now. And it doesn't matter what people say that saw you six months ago, a year ago. <laughs> Kick rocks. I don't care what you say. I'm a new person in Christ. Right? What happened two years ago, man? It's gone. Bye. You got to say that. Bye. That's tombstone, right? When the guy got killed and they're taking his body out to go bury, and the, the bad guy says, Bye. And that's what you got to say to your old man. Bye. You're gone. And you got to learn to live that new life in Christ. Amen. I live this new life, and I'm not bragging or boasting. I like to have fun. I went to go have dinner with a couple uh, after Thursday night's thing. How, uh, we were like to 1.30 out there, man. 1.30, having fun. And she remembered us, the waitress. She says, oh, you're the people from Thursday night. I said, because she saw us laughing and having a good time. You guys want more coffee? No, we don't want coffee. It's already 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I got to go home. <laughs> but, you know, people remember you because you're laughing. You have a good time. They're, oh, they're loud. They're obnoxious. It don't matter. 
You would have had me with a poochie face right here all <laughs> looking hard at you and everything like that, you know. Uh, instead of having a good time. We did that during the week too, right? That was last Sunday, right? Went out with a bunch of people from the church after uh, uh, evening service. And we were there till like 11 o'clock, huh? Until our grouch person wanted to go home, you know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but he, he says right here, he says, flee away from youthful lust, but, but pursue what? Righteousness, faith, love, peace. And those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Why are we acting foolish? Why are we talking about some ignorant stuff? People want to talk about some heavy, ignorant stuff. They don't even, it's not going to save you. It's not going to help you. I don't care how deep you are in Hebrew and, and uh, uh, Greek. Sometimes we argue over a word. I'm going to close right here. This happened to me. Uh, we were in a uh, 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 barn wall. And there was a, a visitor there. Deep. D, big, thick word in the Bible and everything, you know. And I, and I said one word. And you know what? He never forgot the word I said, and I preached for like 50 minutes. And when we stopped, he waited for me. We prayed for people, and he came, and he says, hey, brother, you, you really messed me up. I said, why? He said, you were mis-announcing uh, uh, or pronouncing, you're, you're mispronouncing tack. I was saying tack. And he says, no, the word is tack. 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 Do you understand what I'm saying? I go, brother, I understand what you're saying. I said, I just didn't say it your way, but I said it. I said, they understood what I was saying. That's all that, that's all that mattered. I got a little ebonics. That's all. I'm good with that. You all right? But he got stuck. Oh, you got stuck on a word, huh? He goes, yeah, I didn't even listen to your sermon because you kept saying tack. And that's not the proper way to say it. I'm like, oh, my God. The devil will blow you or your mind away. You don't even listen to what the, void, what the Bible is saying or the, what the Spirit of God is saying because the devil gets you stuck on one word. McDonald's. Oh, yeah. I'm hungry. Man, oh, right now, man, I'm going to get a Big Mac, a quarter pounder. A pie, a large fry, and a chocolate shake. That's what I'm going to be getting. Yep, it's going to be good. I don't care if it costs $25. You're talking to yourself. And pastor's preaching and preaching and preaching. And then, oh, my God, what was he saying? The enemy just stole that time from yourself. And that's why we got to guard our mind, guard our hearts. And I'm telling you guys from experience. I'm not just saying this. I've experienced this stuff. And, and what we have to do is stay on the word. And I'm going to end right here with this, this word right here. Oh, I can probably finish it real quick. He says, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife, fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach and patient. Be patient. This is what we're called to be. I mean, you, you should be able to teach people in humility, correcting those who uh, are in opposition. We got to learn how to correct people in, in opposition. They're against Christ, but we're going to win them over. We're going to learn how to talk to them. Amen? Even if they don't like us, I'm going to win them. There's people in my church I know they didn't like me and probably still don't like me. It don't matter. I'm going to preach to them in Jesus' name. I'm going to hug on them. I'm going to love on them. Amen? It doesn't matter to me. He says, so in humility, in humility uh, correct those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, it's not guaranteed. Unless they repent. You don't get to go to heaven if you don't repent. You must tell God, I'm sorry, I blew it. I apologize for the way I lived, the way I thought, the way I spoke. I'm not going to speak that way no more. I repented. I turn away from my sin. 
I turn away from my old lifestyle. I repent and I'm going forward. That's how it works to live. But if we continue over here, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just kicking it right here with the homeboys and getting down and all this and that, you know. And then I'll be a Christian when I get over here on Thursday. I'll be a Christian on Sunday. That's not, yeah, it's all bad. That's not the way, that's the, that's the way we live. We're separate from them. When my homeboys came at me, I, hey, bro, I'm a cristiano. I'm a Christian, bro. Well, you're a sellout. Whatever you want to say, brother, whatever you want to say. I'm from the same neighborhood you have on your forehead. I'm, I used to be from that neighborhood right there. I knew you when you were, we were little, little brother. I said, you weren't all this. Now you're all this. But I ain't afraid of you, and don't be afraid of me. I ain't tripping. I'm a Christian. I'm better, brother, than what I used to be. That's what we're to be, amen? We're, we're to be better people, for they can witness and see that, you know what? God has done something in Randy's life. Randy's life. Something changed in his life. And did he trip? Sure, you tripped, right, Mill? Remember our little conversation we would have there? He goes, I'm tripping. I said, it's all right. You're going to get up. This ain't the end, my brother. We all fall down, but we get up. Right? We all fall down. Failure is not final. You make it final when you quit. But you know what? I'm fighting, and, I, and I'm tripping, and I'm tripping over myself. I'm tripping over my thoughts. I'm tripping over everything that's going on in my life, but I'm still going forward. And if I got to crip, if I got to crip over there, I'm going to crip over there. In Jesus' name, amen. You got to do what you got to do to get to the end. Because everything that we go through, when it's the end and you make it, you're going you're gonna to get to the glory and you're like, <laughs> that was nothing compared to what I'm receiving. Nothing compares to what I'm receiving in Christ today in my life. Nothing whatsoever, amen? Nothing can be compared to that. I ain't even going to look back. You look back, you trip. If I keep looking back, I'm going to fall over this thing and break my neck. So I got to keep looking straight ahead, amen? And I'm not going to trip. I'm not going to fall because I'm going to keep looking forward in Jesus' name. And this is the last, this is the last scripture. I'm going to read 25, 26 just to bring it in content right here. We're done. And humility, uh, and humility correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so they may know the truth. It's the truth that sets us free. Without the truth, we're still bound. Our mind is still messed up because we're not free yet. Until you say to yourself, in Jesus' name, I want freedom. I want to be liberty. I want, I want liberty. I don't want to be the old man no more. I'm tired of that guy. And it, if you tolerate this stuff, you're never going to get set free. You got to be able to not tolerate the old life. I'm not doing this no more. I came to that at 34 years old when I received the Lord. I said, I don't want to do this no more. You were there, Jose Luis. When I gave you all the stuff, here, you could have it. I thought, thought he was scoring. Oh, yeah, yeah, right on. Okay, I'll see you next week. I said, no, you're not going to see me no more. I'm going to be sober, bro. I said, I'm going to serve God. I, I need Jesus in my life. He's a witness. He was there in the garage with me, and he left. He was all happy, you know. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. You're right. Right. But God had set me free. And here he is now, free himself. Amen, in Jesus' name. Witness to another witness. And he's going to go be a witness to somebody. And you're going to go be a witness to someone. And you're going to be a witness. And you're going to be a witness. And you're going to be a witness. You're going to go testify in the goodness of God, the forgiveness of God. Amen? That's what you're going to do. That's your assignment, to go win souls. I don't care if they want to hear you. I have people... Like I told you, flip me off and want to do things to me. And I'm like, bro, you're not going to move me. I know what God did for me. This is what I asked for, a sober life. I didn't know what it was to be sober. And some of you know that too. That you didn't know what it was to be sober. I didn't know what it was to be sober. I wanted to be sober. I wanted to know what it was to think straight. 
Not perverted. Perverted doesn't mean uh, sexually. Perverted means that you want to hurt somebody. People think that that's norm in the normal in the ghetto in the in the uh, barrios. They think that, that you know killing somebody, hurting somebody is normal. Well, that's what he deserves. That's what I used to say. Well, he wanted some, he got some. But that's not normal. That's abnormal. That's that's wrong thinking. That's something's wrong with you. And that's why we need Jesus. Can I get an amen? We need Jesus in our lives. And he says right here, and they and and that they may come to their senses. There it is. Thank you, Father. That's what I did. I asked God for my senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. We're not going to do that. You have the power. You have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you guys only knew that name, if you only knew the power that is in that name, you can lay hands on people and get them set free. You can speak to them with the power of the name of Jesus and set them free and become Christians. If you would just have confidence that God has done this work for you and now you can do it for others. That we don't, that's why he says, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Because when you're around certain people, you're not even telling them you're Christians because you're ashamed. You won't even say hallelujah because you're ashamed. You won't even say glory because you're ashamed. But here at church, you will. But when you're in front of them, hey, brother, glory to God. Como es cambiado? I did, brother. I did. I didn't change. Mi vida ya es cambiado. Ya ha cambiado. Ahora puedo decir gloria. Ahora puedo decir Jesús. Cuando antes no podía decir ese nombre. It was a foul name for me at that time. But now I know it's salvation. Now I know it's love. I know it's freedom. I know it's power in the name of Jesus. And I just want to encourage you guys, you guys on YouTube and Facebook, it's time. You complain about a lot of things, but you tolerate it in your life. And every one of us have done it. Don't turn me off. Turn me on right now in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's time. It's time to say, you know what, I'm not tolerating this lifestyle no more. I'm not tolerating this lifestyle. I'm not a quitter. You're not a quitter, Jessica. I wanted you to know that. You're not a quitter. You're a victor. Amen? And some of you guys have to know that. You overcame already. Let's, let's not go put on the old uniform. It doesn't fit you no more. You know, some of you ladies trying to wear that number three again. You know, it's over. It's done. Get rid of it. You still got it in the, in the, in the closet. I'm going to get in it. No, you lie. You ain't going to get in it. Just give it away. Some of us, you know, we used to wear 33s and 32s. That was a long time ago. When I was in my 20s, you can't. Uh, mm, I kept a pair of pants like that for a long time. Like, I'm never going to get in these 33s again. It's over. I would have to weigh like 150 pounds. Then you guys would think I have cancer or something. <laughs> well, this brother, he's all, it's all messed up. He's instructing Timothy. I want you guys to read chapter 2 now after what I said in light of what was said by the Spirit of God. I encourage you each, invest in yourself. Aren't you, don't you value yourself, Ozzy? Joe, don't you value yourself? Don't you value your life? Because if we didn't, we would do a lot of stupid things that we used to do. But now we value ourselves. Aunt Teresa, don't you value your life? Yes. Well, Randy, you value yourself better than before, right? That's how it's supposed to be. Right, Ted? You value your life now. Yes, well, we did not value, huh, Roxanne? You, you value yourself. That's what we're supposed to do. We're better now because of Jesus Christ. I'm not better than you, and you're not better than me. I'm just better than what we used to be. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand. Come on, give the Lord a praise offering. Pero la semana que entra, hermano, si, hermana, si vamos a tener, no sé cómo se dice en español, say it out loud for me. ¿Cómo? Okay, eso, dijo eso. 
<risa> y tenemos un, unos dos jóvenes que hablan español e inglés que son bilingües. Ellos sí son bilingües, hablan español e inglés. Hay unos aquí también que son bilingües. Y están, ellos dicen todo lo que digo, you know, ahí, ahí arriba. So, el domingo, si le gusta, puede regresar. O el jueves, el, el, el domingo vamos a tener comida. Todo, todos de nosotros traemos comida y comemos todos juntos como familia. Porque somos familia. Amen. We're family. Amen. Sí me entendió, ¿verdad? Un, un poco, soy un poco, pero... Un pochito, pero... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric goes, see, <laughs> yeah, Eric, yeah. Father, we bless you and we thank you. I thank you for the word today, Lord God. The word that has fallen on good ground, fertile ground, the hearts and their souls of their lives. That the seed of life, your word is seed of life. That, Father, as that seed dropped in their hearts and dropped in their souls, Lord, that it began to change them, Lord God. That their faith began to grow, their hope, their love, their kindness, their meekness, their forgiveness, their resilience, their endurance, Lord God, their mercy. Those seeds are inside of every believer right here, Lord. And I thank you that every time they worship, Every time they praise, every time they read, every time they talk about the word of God, the fruit begins to be evident in their lives. That they're walking in peace now, Lord. They're no longer bitter or anger, angry, Lord. That may happen here and there, far and few between, but it's not something they're living in no longer. They're living in love. They're walking in faithfulness and trueness to who you are, Lord God. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you touch their lives and change their lives from this day forward, Lord, that they won't look back, but they'll press on and reach for the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus, their Lord. I pray for the children that are next door. I pray for a divine protection over them. I pray that every wicked and every unreasonable person be removed from their lives, Lord. That Christians and godly friends would come into their lives and begin to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray the same thing for the adults here. That every wicked and every unreasonable person be removed from their lives. And I pray that they won't invite those people back into their lives, Lord. And once it's done, it is done, Lord God. Because you said it was finished and it's done. So, Father, I pray that right now. I pray that they would walk in the newness of life, the transformation of their life by the spirit of the living God, by the power of your word. I pray and I thank you for divine protection as they drive home. Father, they'll have a good time. They'll be blessed, Father. They'll be full of joy tomorrow morning when they wake up. They're like, man, I feel good. I thank you and I bless you for their lives right now. And for everyone on, on uh, YouTube and everyone on Facebook, I pray for your life right now in the name of Jesus that you receive this word. And this word would be good to you. It would heal you, make you well, make you whole. Receive that right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Just stretch your hands forth toward your TV or your screen or your telephone, wherever you are. Just receive it. And let the Lord just bless you. I thank you. I honor you, Father, for every one of them here and everyone on media, Lord. In Jesus' name. And all of us said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hug on somebody. Introduce yourself, somebody. Amen. Come and say hi to her. Habla español, la, la joven. Habla español. Pueden, ustedes pueden hablar. Jessica, tú hablas español, ¿verdad? Caroline, you, you speak Spanish. Aquí, si que, con ella. Amen.